What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here, welcome back to another PS4 tutorial. So in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys how to basically get fake package files running on a 4.55 PS4 and how to basically have them installed on a USB drive or an external device, so an external hard drive or a USB so that uh, you know if you're running out of space on your hard drive you can have the the games basically installed on your on an external device instead so you're not taking up space on your hard drive uh, if you have loads and loads of games um, but I'll be showing you both so how to basically install it normally and get it running get games running installed to the hard drive and an external device as well um, afterwards so now this is for basically PS2 games um, it's for you know demos free trials and also of course game backups so full game backups uh, so you know a game that you've taken on disk and you've backed it up into a package file so that you can this will show you how to run that package file without the disk um, now yes it, uh, I'm not going to be showing you how to get or what sites to go to to get games for free um, you'll have to do that yourself if you're doing that that's not what this is about um, so yeah, I'm, I can't show you that unfortunately. Uh, so yeah, that's basically it. So for this video, I'm going to be doing Dying Light as my game, as my like game backup, um, PT as a game demo, and I've also got Heat Seeker as a PS2 game. So I'm going to do one of each to show you that it's basically the same with with you know any one of these types of games. So first of all, here what we're going to do is get the games on a USB so first step is to go ahead and make sure you have a USB stick that's formatted in XFAT or FAT32 format you can right click and format it and change the formatting to XFAT if it's on NTFS and then what you want to do is copy your package files onto the USB so grab your package files right here and drag them onto the USB stick right here now, if you're planning on also, uh, if you're also planning on using this USB device or another USB device uh, to store the games on, uh, then you're going to want to basically create a new folder also in here called PS4 in uppercase, and then in this folder, you're going to want to put in the the a folder with the name of the game that you're installing or not the name, but the the ID, the title ID of the game. So for example, PT, and this is only for if you're doing the USB method, remember, uh, you have to do this extra step, which is to create this PS4 folder, create a new folder with the ID of the game. So this is the title ID for PT. So I'm gonna put that in there. And then you're also gonna to want to create a um, any other games you have. So for example, nine 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 that is the ID that I made for my PS2 game when I created it I gave it that ID so you want to add those IDs and then you want to copy the respective games into those IDs so PT I'm going to copy into um, in here and then we do the same with our PS2 game also copy it into the folder with the ID and there you go now this is definitely a lot better uh, it may seem a bit more complicated but this is a lot better than using the payload that uh, that you that you're kind of supposed to use really the the payload which actually copies the package files on the from the PS4 it copies it from the hard drive to the U to the USB and it will create these folders for you so you don't have to like worry about knowing what the title ID is but it's painfully slow like terribly slow compared to just this this method of just copying it manually yourself uh, on the USB is so much faster so much more efficient so even though you have to work out what title ID your game is which you can do from a quick Google search um, or just look at the spine of the case of the game and you'll know uh, what the ID is it's a lot faster and a lot better to do it this way than you know using the payload to actually copy the game itself because that takes forever 
Um, I'm talking like half an hour for like a one gigabyte game. It's terribly slow. Uh, this is a lot faster. Okay, so once you've copied the files over, you want to rename them to app.package. So whatever they were called before, rename them to just app. So app.package file. And the same for this one as well. So I've done that on both games right there. I'm not going to do Dying Light. Um, I'm just going to install that one to the hard drive because it's going to take too long to copy copy Dying Light because it's like 12 gigabytes. All right, so once you've done that, delete that folder. That's not supposed to be in there. All right, so once you've done that, uh, you're pretty much ready to go. So what you want to do is unplug your USB stick and plug it into the PS4. Okay, so on the PS4, you're going to want to head to your, obviously, your WebKit exploit page. Uh, oops, my firewall's blocking that. Just disable my firewall temporarily. And we should get it loading, there we go. So 4.55, of course, you want to select that. And uh, technically, I, you can get these versions that work on 4.05 as well. So I'm, I might put in the title 4.05 because it's basically the same process if you're on 4.05, except you select 4.05 in here instead of 4.55. So I'm going to select 4.55. So what we're going to do is we're going to load up Hen, the homebrew enabler. Okay, so when it says you're all set, then we're good. Homebrew enabler is enabled. And we can go to settings, scroll down to debug settings, game, package installer. And then the package files you have on the USB stick should show up. So just select them and it will start installing that uh, package file. So these are the package files that are on the root of the USB that it's detecting right now. The, the, these package files, in order to install them initially, they need to be on the root of the USB. The other ones that we have inside that PS4 folder, that's for when we come to transfer them to run from the USB. Uh, but we still need to install them to the hard drive initially uh, in order for this to work. So we need to install them to the hard drive first, and then once they're installed to the hard drive, you can then get them, then do the next step to get it installed off the USB instead and basically move it to the USB. Okay, so that's PT installed. Now I'm going to install my PS2 game, Heatseeker. And you can see why I called the folder CUSA999999. You can see the name of the package file after UP9000. It's dash CUSA and then that's the title ID of the game. So that's why I named it that folder. The reason is that um, PS2 games, you actually create create them yourself. You create the package file yourself and you have to give it a, a title ID. And it can be pretty much any title ID. So I always just do 99999 and then the next one would be 99998, 99997, etc. Okay, and that's the PS2 game installed. Now I'm going to install Dying Light. All right, there we go. So all three packages are installed. So if we head back to the home page now, you can see we have all three packages installed. If I try and launch my backup of Dying Light, there you go, no disk inserted and it runs perfectly fine. Well, I mean, loading screen right now, but there you go. You can see there that it's running. So go ahead and close this. Just show that uh, Heat Seeker works as well, a PlayStation 2 game on 4.55. See, there we go. Game is loading up. There we go. All right, so, and PT obviously is the same. I won't run that as well. You get the idea, they work. Okay, so there you go. All three games are working perfectly fine. Now, you can basically stop here uh, if, if that's all you wanna do. You just wanna have them installed on the hard drive, the internal hard drive, uh, then that's fine. Uh, but if you want to basically have them stored on a USB or an external device to save space on your hard drive so that the actual games are installed on the external device instead, uh, then I'll go ahead and show you guys how to uh, get that set up as well. So back over to the computer here, what we're going to do is we need to inject these, this payload here, app to USB. So unplug your USB first from the PS4, plug it back into your computer. And then on the computer, we're going to go into the USB. Now, you can basically delete the games that were in here before. Uh, just not the ones in the PS4 folder, but the ones in the root. Because we've all got them installed on the PS4 now, so we don't need them there anymore. Uh, but the ones inside here, we are going to need. Now, 
you want to copy this app to usb.ini which comes with the payload uh, which will be in the description and you want to just go ahead and drag that into the ps4 folder not the root of the usb put it in the ps4 folder next to your game id folders and then open it up because this is a configuration file and we're going to use this to configure how this payload's going to work so the first thing we want to do is uncomment out uh, check USB. So with that uncommented, that's going to check the USB to see if there are any games that are already installed, which there are, there are two. Then we want to uncomment out this mode move. So what that'll do is it will use this list as basically games that you want to copy from the hard drive to the USB. Uh, instead of ignoring them, if you have that, if you have it commented, it will ignore the this list basically. So anything with this list, any IDs in here, it will ignore. So it will just copy every game apart from the ones that you have. You don't want that. You want it uncommented out, so it's going to move these two instead. And because we already have the apps in here, uh, the check USB is going to make it so that it's not going to actually try and copy uh, the game like say Heat Seeker for example, it's not going to try and copy Heat Seeker uh, from the hard drive to the USB because it's already on the USB. Instead it's just going to basically delete it from uh, the hard drive so that uh, and link it to the, the one on the USB instead. So what we need to do then is just change this list here uh, to the IDs of the games that we have, the ones we want on the USB. Uh, so, so we want this one here, this ID and we want this one as well. So put in your IDs in there, get rid of that, because we only, we're only doing two here. So that's how you want it to look, basically. You want that uncommented, that uncommented, and then the list of the games that you have here in the USB added down here. And then you just want to go ahead and save that. And we're basically ready to go. So plug the USB stick back into the PS4 now. Now I'm not sure if it matters if it's in USB 1 or USB 0, but just in case if you're having any issues, then I would recommend plugging the USB stick into the right USB stick. So the USB port on the right, not the one close to the disk drive. So plug it into that one and uh, that should hopefully avoid is any issues. So then we need to inject this payload. So we're going to open up a payload injector like Netcat GUI or PS4 AIO or any other payload injector. And you want to drag the payload into the payload file path or click to browse for it. Change the port number to 9020 instead of 9023. Make sure your PS4's IP address is entered here and then it should be ready to go. Okay, so you might want to restart the PS4 so I restarted the PS4 here mainly because what, because we already injected the homebrew enabler payload. Um, yeah, the WebKit doesn't take kindly to trying to, you know, inject multiple payloads one after the other. You normally have to restart after each payload injection. So uh, not always though, but uh, most of the time you do. So what you'll notice as well is when you restart the PS4, the games will be locked and you won't be able to run them. Uh, that'll happen every time you restart. You just have to run the homebrew enabler payload again to re-enable them to allow you to run them. They'll still show up with the padlock symbol, but you will be able to run them. Uh, but uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to select original because we're going to inject our uh, app to USB payload. So when it says you're all set, all you do on the computer is you click inject payload. It should say done. And then back onto the PS4 here, it says, warning, this payload will modify file system of your PS4. So it's just warning you. So now it says, unplug your USB drive to cancel this. Again, another warning, just ignore it. Okay, so now here we go, copying apps to USB. So it should only come up with the ones that, it, that are already on the USB. So there you go, it says it's found them, so it's skipping them. And then it should say completed. Because we set up the INI file in that way, it's not going to do any of the other apps that we have. Um, so, you know, if, if we didn't set up the INI that way, it would try and do like any of the other apps and games like these that I have on here as well. It would try and copy them to the USB. But because we, um, we configured the INI file, it's only done the two that we had on that folder which were Heatseeker and PT. So now I'm going to see if I can 
inject the homebrew enabler payload. Might work here, I might have to restart again. Just try a few times. Come on. No, I don't think it's going to do it. Oh, no, there we go, it worked. Okay, so with Homebrew Enabler, we should be able to now run these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug the USB. Okay, so the USB stick is not plugged into the PS4 anymore. So these games should not run. Yep, there you go. Cannot start the application. The data is corrupted. It's saying that because, you know, it can't find it. It's looking for it on the USB instead of the hard drive. So that proves that it's on the USB, not the hard drive. So heat seekers the same. Cannot use application. But dying light will work because that's still on the hard drive. So there you go. And then it will also just plug the USB stick back in. So I'm going to plug the USB stick in. I've plugged it back in. I'm going to start Heat Seeker. There we go. Took a little second to detect it there, but now it's running. So there you go. It's definitely on the USB now. So yeah, that's basically it. That's how you do it. That's how you get PS4 games and you know your backup PS4 games, your game demos, PT will run now as well, and also your PS2 games. Not only installed and running on a jailbroken PS4 uh, without the disc, but also how to get them uh, running off a USB or an external hard drive instead of the internal drive. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Now also bear in mind that this does not work on official PlayStation 4 package file games. So what I mean by that is like games that you would normally download from the PSN store, because um, some of them will show up uh, on certain websites and if you download them they will not work. The homebrew enabler cannot unlock official PS4 games. It only works with fake package files which are custom made package files uh, made by like Orbis PubGen and stuff like that. It will only work with those kind of package files. It does not work with official PlayStation 4 package files that you would get from like the PSN store when you buy a game from the store instead of having a disc version. So just keep that in mind. It will work with fake package files, slash custom package files, whatever you want to call them, not official PlayStation 4 package files. All right, so yeah, that's basically it. hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, go ahead and leave a like and subscribe uh, if you're new around here. And uh, yeah, comment if you have any questions. And I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.